If you're looking for a clean, sober, professional, academic, well-researched, historically accurate, generally accurate, serious podcast on Southern folklore, ghosts, bizarre events, and unique people, this podcast is not for you. However, if you've decided you can live with that, then join us for The Strange South. y'all we are having a live event finally come see the strange south at romarin et Copo. there will be door prizes and merchandise and of course the show as we tell strange and bizarre southern stories the event is monday may 16th doors will open at 6 30 the show starts at 7 it is ten dollars you can find tickets on our website and we can't wait to see you flopping but well, you've touched it. You can't touch it at all? Well, uh, you should be able to. <laughs> you should be able to touch it. Touch it, it should stay up. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm mm. just saying. <laughs> it's been my experience. Uh-uh. <laughs> it's been my experience. <laughs> Can I help? Especially, I like you better than most of the men. I've had wow. Um, don't touch it. <laughs> okay, then I won't. I wonder if they I played know. that at the fifth grade dance. I don't last know night. how I sound. You sound good. Can you not hear you? Um, Can yeah, you not kind hear of. You? I just want to make sure I'm not too far away. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think so. Yeah. You'll sound fine. I'm not used to reading off my screen down here, and I feel a little blinded. Ugh, I know. Because I printed everything. Like, I normally print it on paper. It's a little challenging. This okay. is probably better because I'm blind. Can you make it as large as you want it to? Go. Oh, that's a good idea. I didn't even get there. I just meant, like, my eyes get worse in the dark. Oh. Because I'm over 40 now. All of a sudden, all my body parts are falling oh, apart. Oh, Lord. They're yes. all degrading. All degrading. 40-year-old boobs. <laughs> so sad. Stop they, are are we on? We um, are We are on. Oh, okay. Hi, Patrice. Hi, Marleya. Hi, Courtney. Hi. Courtney. They just broke, hey, broke to me the, the news that if you lose weight, the first thing that loses weight is your tits. <laughs> and I'm really upset by this mm-hmm. because... <laughs> I can't believe I, you didn't know that at 40. I like my tits and I didn't know. Oh my God. I don't want them to go already. away. <laughs> no, it's just, this is totally a sobering thing. I like my tits all times a day. <laughs> you heard it here first? <laughs> I didn't know we were get, going there right away. It must be this drink. <laughs> oh my God. This gosh. drink is amazing. This is like probably top three favorites. Really? Yeah. I'm so glad. It's I was, it I was really worried. is amazing. It is amazing. After. It's 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 very small though, and so we're just like lug lug. <laughs> yeah, we've already had like three, uh, but oh. it's so delicious. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm seriously so happy. So she's gonna tell you what it is. Mm-hmm. You need to like mm-hmm. go to her website, find this drink. We were deciding what to call it, and we have decided to call it the Fool Spring. Fool Spring. Sorry. Because right now, it, <laughs> it, right now it. today, the answer. this weekend, if you live in the south, you may know it's March, but yet it was snowy, icy. Well, mm-hmm. it was seventy, yeah, it, the and week then before, it, yeah, literally like in, seventy, in and twelve then it's, hours. Yeah, it snowed at midnight, <laughs> <laughs> and and tomorrow it's going to be sixty-five. <laughs> oh, snowed, was... ice, but the day before sunny. I mean, there's been yeah. days of eighties, and we knew it oh, would yeah. totally last. And then but... yesterday we made a small snowman. <laughs> there was a snowman, a very small snowman named so Snowbert the fifth. So, we were trying to think of that term, uh, faux spring, false spring, right. fool's spring is what fool's we were spring. experiencing I like before. Spring. Cold again. Um, it is pretty much all alcohol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was, doing a, I was doing a lot of math, and thanks to Google, conversions are much easier when you're going from... We were trying to have conversations with Courtney while she was making... And she was like, shut up! She's like, math! Shh. No, they said, can I help? Can we help? And I said, no, I'm doing math in here. Can't help me. Yeah, but then we asked you a question and you just went, shh. Yeah. It was point, 
Oh, I'm not I blaming you. I based it off you. of yeah. a recipe, but I changed it up, and they were using 0. 0.2 um, <laughs> oh, ounces. Oh, who does that? And like, yeah, 0. Mm. 0.6 ounces. And I was, it's first like off, when... that made the tiny drink. Yes. That was it, was, it was a very small drink. It's a very small so drink. So I had to double but... and then convert to ounces, and then here we are. Dainty. And then here we are. So it's bullet here rye, um, sweet vermouth. Uh, Saint Germain, Saint Germain. Oh, Saint Germain. Saint Germain. Two oh, types oh. of bitters: uh, aromatic and pechodes, and VSOP brandy. I don't even know what that is. Very special something. <laughs> VSOP means like a little bit higher shelf. Brandy. Oh, okay. Very special. Yeah. Okay. Did you have that? You had it. In I your had brandy. Yes. Stash? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Nice. Fancy. We, okay. we are so fancy. fancy. It's not the most expensive. Of brandies, but yeah, it's and it's good. got like twists of oh, yeah, peels twist. in it because mm-hmm. you can smell. It, yeah, it makes a difference. It is, y'all. Yes, like, this seriously. Is lemon. When this you is take a high a zest, class. The thing it about people class. not don't know about zest, it's not just to look at. When you have a zest, you're supposed to hold it over your drink and twist it, and you'll see if you watch close enough, you'll watch the little oils. The zest oils, yeah, yeah, come out. That's and then you just want to like smear yeah. it all over your face because it so smells so cheers. essence of lemon. Cheers, y'all. Cheers, y'all. Oh, God, cheers. I'm gonna be a fucking shit show. <gasps> Don't need to sip this one. <laughs> we had an email from a longtime listener who has given us some stories in the past, and I'm not going to use her name just anonymous but she wanted to pose a question to everybody listening okay to see if like if this is just her or if something like this has happened to oh. others okay and it's super weird hi patrice uh, let me just y'all it says hello patrice but i'm gonna say hi patrice i don't know <laughs> i don't need to be changing words just read the words patrice just read what is there just read what it says don't be ad-libbing people we emails. haven't read this by the okay, way thank you. she has but we haven't okay hello patrice this is the last super weird thing that has happened to me buckle up this happened at my mom's house when i was a teenager as i previously mentioned it was isolated and on a hill surrounded by trees had a bumpy, rutted gravel driveway as well. When you drive up to the house, there are railroad ties for stairs going up the yard and side porch. So this happened during the late spring, early summer. The sun was setting, and while climbing the stairs towards the back door, I stopped to admire the changing oranges and pinks in the sky. Halfway up the stairs, I can see looking down the paved road, curling between two pastures and a mountain view in the distance. Beautiful. While I'm looking, I see some clouds starting to swirl. My first thought that is a tornado is forming. I'm transfixed to the spot. Instead of a funnel forming as expected, the clouds are widening into a large circle, still swirling. The best description I can give here is what I saw is a large bowl shape tilting towards me, still swirling. I can see inside, all the clouds still moving. On the side, I see what looks like a door open and a black figure walks towards the center and stops. Then another and another more. These human-like figures were gathering side by side, seeming to hold hands and make a circle in the middle. I was amazed and scared, broke my concentration finally and ran inside, locking the door behind me. I waited a few minutes and then looked out the window. I could see the clouds, but nothing else. I have no idea what I saw. Many years later, I've tried Googling weird cloud formations. Anything that would be similar so far, I haven't found anything like it. So weird, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that well, has never happened especially. to me. No, that's never happened. <laughs> Damn. Right. But it does kind of, you know, remind me of um, Ingrid Cole. Mm-hmm. And, and that whole situation mm-hmm. with figures coming mm-hmm. out of things, landing, and whatnot. So, weird. So, she would like to know if anybody else has any. hmm Wow. Has anybody else had any kind of weird circular Was this cloud? in the south? I don't think it was Florida. Okay. Florida, there's mountains? Maybe. Maybe. Hills. 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 Yeah. Weird. Pastures. 
yeah lowland to highland yeah north florida has got lots of so. pastures Weird. anyway so there we go if, if anything similar that you've seen or heard or read about um yeah give us a shout out stories at the strange south.com yes and uh we will keep our ears and eyes peeled but the only yeah the only thing that i can think of is like the injured coal hopping around the world and like stopping off at different places in their little spaceship and having things happen like that damn Thanks for sharing. Yes, yeah. thank you. We love it. Thank you so much for listening. That too. freaks me out a little. <laughs> <laughs> freaked <too>. out now. <laughs> Everybody's freaked out. It's like nobody moved. Mm. Too freaked out. Oh my god. <sighs> but that is all I have for intros, and I know that you have your story. Unless you want to talk about you anything else. I've got nothing else to talk about. This is I have a lead in, hmm. which is kind of what I want to talk about. Okay, I'm ruining. No. So we I can edit it where it seemed natural. Yes. yes. <laughs> Shh, act more natural. <laughs> so I've been watching I've been watching this show on HBO called Raised by Wolves. Have you I watched the first episode. I couldn't hang. That's the thing. Normally I can't hang with those shows. Like I don't I you don't know anything it. about it. No. It's so normally sci fi wise, I'm much more like I'm the I'm I'm like a lazy sci fi. I'm totally I'm well, I'm a lazy watcher. Of yeah, shows I mean anyway. I'm like I'm like Star Trek Next Generation. I'm not Dune. You right. know, like I can't I can't live in your world. Like there are too many rules. There's politics and strategy and shit. I, love Dune. I, I haven't Dune, even. I, but yeah. see, I can't do that. I haven't I even read. watched Game of Thrones because yeah. I'm like oh. I too much. Yeah. You know, I mean, it crosses. I'm I'm lazy. I'm a lazy gamer. I don't like playing Risk. I don't like. I probably wouldn't like The Last of Us as much as mm. you love it because it's complicated. Right. Shows like Raised by Wolves, which is. A very much like a world building slow burn sci fi. I, I probably would. I mean, I watched the first one, but I was still kind of like, uh, blah, I quit blah, blah. after yeah. watching the first episode and then I kept on thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So I, I went back and I started watching it again and then I couldn't quit. Oh, I and should go back then. It just it hooked me and mm -hmm. I just kept on going. So they released the second season not that long ago and I'm almost done with it i think they're releasing the final season you know, on the 17th of my have, or final episode they must have been running an advertisement because it's been on my mind recently because i only gave it one shot mm -hmm. and i'm thinking i probably do need to give it a second like if i can't get past the first episode i think i really need to skip to like the third episode mm -hmm. or something i wonder if you could i don't know if you could no no okay it's one of those hidden clues everywhere mm. sort of shows okay but so raised by wolves caught me and it's the kind of premise of it is that you're in the future. There has been a war on earth between believers and atheists and the atheists sent embryos of humans off to another planet to escape the war, the war and like to be raised by androids right. as atheists on the other planet. Right. And then, you know, like 10 years later, the believers discover this place or they have discovered it a while back, but they slowly make their way to this planet. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting premise, too, because it's believers and then people who don't want to be in cults. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. like, I think part of what gets me about it is how philosophical everything is, because mm -hmm. you know how I am with religion. I mean, right. I'm always, it catches me. Mm -hmm. I always stick with religion stuff. And so, you know, of course, these things happen, chaos ensues, but it's like, you know, androids relation to humans and what does it mean to be a human and what is faith and what the fuck is happening on this planet, you know, and right. why are these giant serpents here? So all this stuff is happening. Anyways, watch the show. If you, if you feel like that kind of falls into your thing. All right, give it a shot. I, I've really liked it, and I don't normally like. Wasn't that kind it of thing. Scientology that had like the the volcano lizard people? Were there lizard? There are lizard people I, I in think Scientology. L. Ron Hubbard, like the whole lizard the, thing. Is came this into the play? lizard people who run the run like secretly running the government? Kind right. Of thing? Or, or, yeah. Or I know here. it's a thing. Yeah, it is a thing. Yes. Interesting. I was watching this show this past week, and one of the characters named Marcus, he gets to a new part, this tropical zone of the planet. He gets to a new part of the planet he hasn't been on before. And there's this giant, like, cactus-like thing growing. And it's got these little, like, clear knobs on it at regular intervals. And he just walks past it and looks at it like, oh, 
grabs one of these knobs and just immediately like puts it between his teeth and bites down on it. And I'm like, who the fuck just randomly eats a space cactus knob? <laughs> but I think he also thinks he's a god at this point. Just spoilers or whatever. But um, it's this. It's this. This is not the an- one of the androids. This no, is, this okay. is a human. The human. Okay. So he he has this thing, and it's like gelatinous kind of, and he bites it, and there's all this just milky kind of opalescent slime inside it and it's like mm-hmm. oozing and he's eating it and i'm like i you need to know that if you type slimy sci-fi vegetable into google you get a bunch of pictures of okra it's 100 percent okra <laughs> it's like everywhere i i, I believe that and so I, can buy that. I decided because i didn't have anything else to say this week that <laughs> I was going to talk about our very own weird ass sci fi vegetable, the very humble okra. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yay! So, it's how fuzzy. let's talk about like how bizarre okra is. I can only eat okra if it's like half burnt mm-hmm. and all the slime is burnt out of it. That's the thing. That is like, it's the thing. However, I will eat pickled okra. Yep. Oh, good. All day long. Oh, good. But it still has I'll tell you why good later. What? Okay, go ahead. No, it go still ahead. has what? I mean, it still has the texture. It has I mean, a little bit It took bit me a long texture. time to eat pickled okra, even oh, though yeah. I love pickles. Well, I had and my I hand okra, in a jar of pickled okra. okra earlier today, and it still has, it the, has slime. the slime. It's like viscous, even yeah. pickled mm-hmm. okra. But so the vinegar kind of helps. Oh, yeah. It, it cuts out. it. Yeah, yeah, it cuts it. So like because this was how I came to this idea this week, I immediately was like, imagine coming from another planet and like finding this plant or hail coming from the north or for real <laughs> right? any place so, you're right? it's like, and, so, and harvesting it oh, i don't yeah. like it like it, it oh, I have would to. like yeah. you to Plant die it and it hurts yeah it, it hurts. would like you to die yeah so like people who if you haven't grown okra or if you're not from the south around here if you're not from around here and you listen to us anyway hi bless you um, thank you <clears throat> So the part that you might recognize as okra, and I think actually, I honestly think when I lived in Virginia, I don't know that I ever had okra. Like, I don't think I ever had okra till I moved to Georgia. Mm -hmm. So you may not, if you're not from down here, you may not have seen okra, but it's the pod of okra that you eat. Most of y'all know this. So it looks like little green dicks. It's like little green, little green plant penises. (laughs) And the older Would ones, you say so. The older ones, well, they're phallic. I, they they are. come off the plant pointing up. They do. They do. And, and they got a little knob them. at the end, <laughs> but they're pointy at the other end, and that's a little weird. Yeah. So the uh, they're <laughs> Courtney's <laughs> like, is, move on, move on. Trace is holding her face. <laughs> so the older, like as they get older, as they sit on the plant more, you were saying there are these spines on okra uh-huh. that if you if you've never like gardened okra, it will it it wants you to die. It, it like it will prick you. It's spiky. It's spiky. velcro. Yes, and it'll you have yes. to wear gloves. And mm-hmm. it's what do they call? They call them um, spines, I think. Mm-hmm. And they make you itch. Mm-hmm. What a lot of things in your garden are going to make mm-hmm. you itch because it's how they protect mm-hmm. themselves. But so there are rules about okra. Like don't pick them any longer than your pinky. They're going to get woody. <laughs> woody. They do get. Woody. Woody Woody little plant penises. (laughs) They get too hard. And then, (laughs) so when you cut an okra, fresh okra, it's like hollowish inside and it's kind of star shaped. It's Mm -hmm. got like, and it's got these, I love these seeds. I'm sorry. There's itty bitty and they're perfectly round round. little bubble seeds. seeds. And And it's in this little star shaped Mm -hmm. pattern when you cut it. But inside these pods, it is gooey Mm -hmm. and it's like a slug has rubbed Mm -hmm. itself all up in on the inside and then sneezed and splooged all at once and the stuff inside is called mucilage or mucilage which is a viscous secretion of bodily fluid so it is literally okra snot that is inside the okra I wonder what it's for are you going to tell us why it does that I don't think I know like what is it like is it supposed to protect is it supposed to like give nutrients like well what's, i mean what's the purpose it has nutrients but i don't know botanically why they grow with goo inside them mm-hmm. i don't know what it is that makes it do that or what purpose it serves to the right. plant because yeah. the leaves also are have mucus in them mm-hmm. like the leaves are a thickener mm-hmm. so that's what and that's the whole thing is that the for us you know for eating purposes the okra we know is a thickener Right. That goo inside. And that's why you use it in soups and stews and gumbo. So like, okay, now y'all are going to laugh because I already took the dick thing too far. But like there, if you search okra and like weird or bizarre, 
there are lots of people on the internet who say that fresh cut okra goo smells like semen. Hey, and what? if you like okra, I apologize for this. And I don't think that semen has a smell. <laughs> so, and this is someone who has a really sensitive nose. I'm not really sure how I've missed this boat my whole life. <laughs> But I like, think people are just attributing something to something that's not necessarily there. But I don't know. What- I don't know. But it wasn't just one dude on Reddit. It was like a lot. Wait. Never mind. Are you going to look it up? No. Is that what you're doing? I'll, no. Okay. Well, can't. anyway, we're going to move on I, from the phallic it. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. So the okra plant, like the okra plant. So now we know the pods are bizarre. Right. The okra plant is kind of bizarre. It's like one plant can get up to 13. There's a woman in Oklahoma last year that was growing her plant up to 13 feet tall. The world record I've is grown. 10 and a half feet. Yeah, they grow. But I've grow seen yours. in my house before. I've seen yours. I was going to say, because Courtney is a tall person, and Courtney has to pull hers down mm-hmm. to like Cut it. harvest off it. And the, the stalks are kind of spiny, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the stalks. Yeah, but I, I've had them. Mm-hmm. I have pictures. They're higher than Yeah, I mean, it's on. crazy. Yeah. And I'm telling Patrice mm-hmm. this like she don't know. Patrice <laughs> knows okra. But so <laughs> six to seven feet is common. And one plant will just keep on just oh, yeah. blowing okra all it I mean like 20 okra a day from or a week from a lot of plants. Mm-hmm. So um and my neighbor, it's I've had I've heard other people have these stories too. It's funny, I found somebody was talking about like mystery okra showing up on their yeah. on their porch. <laughs> that happened to me. That like happens. your your elderly neighbor, your elderly neighbor has a small garden patch mm-hmm. and planted a couple okra. And now has more okra midsummer than he could possibly do anything with and wanders around the neighborhood like Just leaving distributing bags okra. of okra <laughs> yeah. on your doorknob. That's what my neighbor does. Yes. And um, so uh, there's stuff I didn't know, though, because I, I do like okra. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't used I have, to. I have memories like, you know, my grandparents always had a garden. My, my parents early on had a garden mm-hmm. and okra it's like one of those things i remember when it came in they would like pick cut toss in flour and then freeze mm-hmm. like everything yeah. would get frozen okra and it would be well. like so much i just remember bags and bags of I like bags prepped, right now like mm-hmm. okra um for the year mm-hmm you know. Yeah, it's got to go in the chest freezer in the garage because mm-hmm. there's no way it's going to fit anywhere else. Right. So all this is the thing I didn't know. All parts of okra are edible except for the plant stalk. You can use the leaves cooked or raw. They they act a little bit like spinach, but they the texture is like a collard kind of texture. It's, it's They're too thick and coarse. It's, it's got yeah, like yeah. prickles on the underside of them. But if you and if you velvety cook it, kind of they are yeah. velvety. velvety, and yeah. if you cook it up. Like with vinegar, if you cook it up a little bit like you would a colored, then it apparently is tasty. I yeah, don't know. I've I never mean, tried fat it. back can fix anything. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, the blossoms, well, y'all have grown co- uh, okra and seen them, but if y'all haven't, the blossoms are gorgeous. Beautiful they're yellow. Yes, they're like a pale yellow, and they've got like kind of a purple in the on the inside, and that inside part is where the pod comes from, and the pod kind of grows in its star shape from the inside of that that flower and I, the flower doesn't live very long so it also like changes color through the day mm-hmm. it basically drops off by the end of the day so it starts out pale and then it changes color as the day goes on and then it dies but the um and that's how it can't live very long because the okra grows so fast yeah, fast um but the flower is edible you can take the flour and like wash it up blossom. and fry. You can stuff and fry, but it doesn't it doesn't stuff very well. It's not like squash blossoms where they're built like with mm-hmm. a little hole inside that you can fill. But they you can put them in salads and stuff, and they apparently taste mm-hmm. kind of like asparagus. Um, and they look the flowers look like hibiscus flowers because mm-hmm. it's related to the hibiscus, mm-hmm. oh, and it's wow. also related to the cocoa plant, which I didn't know. Oh wow, I didn't know that either. So um, it's not cold coca, sensitive. But coca. Maybe, cocoa. yeah, coca, yeah, coca. Wait, cacao, cocaine. cacao, cocaine, or not cocaine, <laughs> cocoa. Should we be snorting? Okra? Like, no, hold on a minute. <laughs> but it's but listen, that we co- shouldn't be. But in the like Civil chocolate. War, uh-huh. people actually took. So if you ever want to save okra seeds, you just wait until they get too oh, woody yeah. to eat, and then you you know wait until they away. rattle around, and then you just take the seeds out because they're all dry. Mm-hmm. But if you do that, and then you put them in a coffee grinder, you can apparently make like a brood coffee replacement out of okra seeds and that's what they did during the civil war when they didn't have you know we talked when we were talking about the blaylocks about how like the the 
southern side generally didn't have access to coffee, but they would make coffee out of okra, and it's a caffeine free replacement. Oh, but I was like, no well, caffeine. why would it have? Why would you drink it then? Right. <laughs> like if it's a caffeine free coffee replacement, Wait, exactly. I was like, but if it is there caffeine and okra. No, it's so weird, but it's a thing apparently, uh, and it's a thing that people do. But um. It doesn't like cold. That's the one thing. So it's safe down here. And it's a very, very hardy crop. And in the mm-hmm. there's a sci-fi movie that I have not seen called Interstellar. It's not that old. It's Matthew McConaughey, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Watch yeah. That. So in the, in the story of that, all the crops have been knocked out by blight and drought or dust storms. And the only crops that anybody can grow are okra and corn. Yeah. And that's why. Is okra, is okra is a survival crop. resistant. And um, I mean, I can forget to water mine forever, and they'll just still. Keep and they're going. You're like, well, we couldn't kill them that one no. year. We were like, it's still there. It's like ten get feet a, tall. A chainsaw out. Seriously. Um, but so anyway, the, the people are all familiar with the pods, but all the other stuff is other countries. They call okra lady fingers, which Ooh. is not even remotely creepy. And then, <laughs> but that when you fry okra, then in those, they call them crispy lady fingers. <laughs> That's crispy ladies' fingers, which. Brings us to the next point because the whole ones I I like it more and more of the whole fried okra. Yeah, whole pieces. fried okra is delicious. We tend to think of okra as a strictly southern plant, but it is not ours. No. So, and, and if Patrice, you're from you the south, this. yeah, if you're from the south, you should know this too. Oh, yeah. see, I'm not from the south, so I'm probably just preaching to people who already know the shit. Well, they probably don't. They I don't. don't. I don't know. I I can't speak for other southerners. So. Um, I I probably would have guessed this. But okra is alien in a domestic versus alien, like non-indigenous mm-hmm. sense. So you like we think of okra as being from the U.S. South. De- Delta State, Mississippi Delta State, has mm-hmm. the fighting okra, okra as their mascot, mm-hmm. which Delta. has an amazing like. If you ever want to see a fun little cute video for it's uh, feartheokra.com. Has, <laughs> they have a great little video about the Delta State mascot, but it's a really ancient crop. So it grew along the Nile mm-hmm. um, for millennia in Egypt, Sudan. Ethiopia um, and then to Nigeria and Central and West Africa and it was cultivated all over Africa South Mm -hmm. Africa Angola everywhere travelers and traders from other countries Mm. to Africa found that you know Africans are eating this pod with their meals and start spreading it to Southwest Asia over the Red Sea via traders slave traders and then when Africans began being captured for enslavement across the Atlantic there were stories of mothers braiding okra seeds into their children's hair so that they could have something to plant when they reached wherever they were going because they didn't know where they were going. Right. So this is how North America got um, okra. Right. And that enslaved people had usually like a very, very small garden plot behind whatever their living quarters was where they could grow their own food. And okra was the food they grew. So by the early 1700s at the absolute latest okra was established as a southern crop in north america Mm -hmm. and so we can just add that to the list of the things that we took from enslaved people right all of our food basically like everything everything that that counts as soul food in the south it's from africa it is yeah but But think about too the history of who my family they were sharecroppers too Mm -hmm. that like um i can just see it especially in appalachia Mm -hmm. you know the the poor people food is what it is oh yeah Yeah. absolutely (laughs) and they said what thomas jefferson had never heard of it before and was all excited because he found it on enslaved people's plots and Mm -hmm. was like oh this is the new superfood Mm -hmm. and like monticello or whatever Mm -hmm. no we we had this for a while we actually do things Mm -hmm. many african languages okra is okro and but it sounds like okra and in angola the name for okra is ngombo mm. no. which gumbo. is where the word gumbo comes from gumbo. because that's so louisiana didn't create mm-hmm. gumbo and the french didn't create gumbo mm-hmm. and there are a lot of people that say that gumbo is like a variation on um bouillabaisse like french uh, like a fish stew right um but there's a serious eats article that i'll link at called total bullshit on that because oh. um gumbo is a version of the african and gumbo stew in which okra is the only thickener and mm-hmm. now if you get gumbo the, the thing root. that you learn first is the root the is the, the, root. the heart of the gumbo but mm-hmm. the root did not used to exist in the gumbo the root is french though the root is french so, it, it comes so from, it's the cajunization yeah, it from, of yeah. an african mm-hmm. a west african right. dish so they the okra was the thickener in gumbo and so um you know it's the only it's like kind of like a 
Yeah, it's like a not a bastardization, but like a it's like it's a like marriage. a mongrelization of yes, it's like a melting pot it's dish. It's a melting pot dish. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, like the languages there, which right. is the yeah, p- the pigeon exactly language, the combination yes. of the cultures. Exactly. Yes. So American palates are not a match for okra as it's used in West African cooking. Oh, okay. Because we squeamish, like we it, the the goo is not something that most of us care for right mm-hmm. like patrice is saying like you only want to eat it if the goo is burned out right and that's why we eat it fried or pickled well, it, that's or why pickled. i had a hard time with gumbo mm-hmm. i can't eat gumbo as i was younger i've grown to it it's taken me a while and well, i love gumbo well, now but it, the goo like you can the goo. feel it if you if it's made oh right, hell you can that, see it mm-hmm. drips that's what i was gonna say i i started looking up West African recipes for okra stew. And one reason it's like, <laughs> so um, if you look at folks from Nigeria or Ghana and West African countries, if they cook okra, okra in <laughs> soups and stews, it like, they, they actually Not say, Oprah, no. don't cook Oprah. Not Oprah, okra. They, they, <laughs> they actually say, don't cook Oprah. If you no. look for it though, it's, they want the okra to be as slimy as possible. Uh-huh. It's actually the thing that, that you're looking for and there are there are videos about like how to choose your okra so you to make sure the slime woody. hasn't yeah. gone mm-hmm. because you want the slime Better not get it too big You'll be gone. so it's i mean it's like <laughs> like you're saying like you stir these the it's trying to pull the spoon back out from you <laughs> you know that's the consistency patrice's and face is just uh, for you were real saying something too. yeah no. i'm sorry patrice no that's fine no I, i'm not a big gumbo person and it's i think it's I haven't even thought about the texture, but now like that's the second reason why I don't like it. What is the first? Uh, the first reason I, reason, I think it's the what is it, the spice the the filet the mm, the filet is sassafras powder. Yeah, I, I'm not a big sassafras powder person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. that's one of the things in the articles that I was like because there's a difference between okra gumbo and filet gumbo yeah. mm-hmm. and that they didn't used to be interchangeable but there's a lot because filet is also a thickening powder mm-hmm. right so and it was used in times when the gumbo the okra was no longer in season and you couldn't mm-hmm. freeze it way back then and so they figured out that the native tribes like the indigenous peoples would take sassafras and grind it up into a powder and that would thicken so yeah. they started using that instead so it's like even more of a melting pot now i you probably know? need to try it because it's been probably 20 30 years oh, since yeah, i've had should. gumbo so as i have my palate has changed yeah it has. so i thought about making some but i made something else instead the first few times i went to new orleans when i was in my 20s i wouldn't even touch it and then yeah. did you like you did you like to. okra at all then yes I've you all, did like I've okra. just fried okra yeah i've had to make myself like slimy okra <laughs> yeah but i do now i like the way that i like roasted okra like uh, what about okra and corn and tomatoes just like uh succotash mm-hmm. See, it's, it's kind of it can be gooey too there's something but, about succotash that i'm not a big fan of but that's like okra and tomatoes alone is like that that's when the slime gets to me mm-hmm. i don't know i like okra by itself i like whole okra roasted or grilled but again it's not slimy then it's well no i guess it's not really roasted there's a no there's really nothing left in it i like the way that they pop i like mm-hmm. the seeds that, that pop right <laughs> it's like boba like tea in a way that i like in the um pickled okra yes Ooh. that's like my favorite yes. i like that too yeah so uh i also i was trying to think of other ways that okra is like an alien plant and it's it has it's strange it's healing all... properties Whoa. oh it does <laughs> everybody's like Ooh. okay yeah. tell me so well can... it's one of no, you're gonna hate me now because we're going back to dicks but it's a vegetable uh, it's an aphrodisiac, it's an aphrodisiac. Oh but you know what god. they say that about everything that's shaped like a penis oh Damn. my god but they say that it can cure impotence oh and um, the funny thing is, when you look this up, the first thing that you get is an article that's title is Lady Fingers Good for Sexual Health. Ah! And I'm like, <laughs> preaching to the choir. Ah! Um, so they also, they soothe digestion, I guess, because they are like adding mucus to your system, basically. I mean, they should soothe digestion. Everything would go down faster and quicker, right? And better. I don't know. But um, they're lo- they are said to lower your cholesterol because of the fiber content. But that's one of those things like 
if you eat a lot of it. Right. And then they're supposed to, um, in like uh, studies that they have um, helped diabetes and balance blood sugar. That one was really interesting to me because um, it said that the fiber that's in okra can stabilize by slowing absorption of glucose from the digestive tract. But isn't that like all fiber? Probably. I think it's just fibrous vegetables would do that. Um, So I'm wondering if frying it reduces the fiber i think it i think it does i think frying and i think part of that i think a lot of the nutrients that are in it have to do with that goo and they're gone Mm. and they're gone when we cook them the way that we could but i mean we fry everything i mean i just don't see it maybe pickled having that much uh, pickled may yeah pickled may help healing properties oh pickled wood and that also helps that okay anything with vinegar right. well listen so Buy i it. looked for Buy unusual it. okra recipe i even looked up okra dessert recipes because i couldn't if you find say okra anything. jello i am like oh. cutting off oh. this podcast I seriously <laughs> right I seriously now. thought that i found okra jello but it was just placed in the wrong part so okay Patrice, listen I'm listen make you some this summer you okra know that jello okra coming. you know now i did find okra ice cream <laughs> i found okra ice cream I found okra Gross. brownies, but that was from one of those places that was With like weed in everything. Them, I hope. No, unfortunately, no. It was, uh, <laughs> but it had point, stuff then? that I didn't understand, like oat fiber, and so it was one of those like super food things. And I was like, I can't with that. But um, then it talked Ooh. there. I found stuff talking about how because okra is related to chocolate, mm-hmm. that chocolate and okra kind of go together not chocolate dipped okra it is chocolate dipped okra okay i might eat it's in the fridge but the only okra that i had was (laughs) was wickle's wicked pickled okra and so it's in the fridge dipped in gear deli chocolate wait no and i want you to try it Uh, our fridge yeah right here (gasps) you made wait what (laughs) why didn't you tell me this i have a fresh frozen okra hole i don't know I, i thought this was fun no, that, I, lo- well, I love the. Uh, that's my favorite. Is is the wicked wickles? I like wickles wicked wicked, wicked okra okra, and yeah. they do they do have a wickles dill I got chocolate that covered dill dough. pickles recipe, and then they had a chocolate fried okra recipe somewhere else, and I was like, well, these things just go together, so yeah, I just I decided that. that that was what I was doing. Okay, let's let's try. I'm gonna go get it. Hold go on. get it. Oh my. God. You're gonna eat it. This I is gonna s- be like the time that I tried to make the Madame Marleya for her birthday, and I used pickled pickled cocktail onions instead of like non pickled for the ice cubes. <laughs> she made a nice weird flavor in there. <laughs> it was like a salty onion, a salty onion with gin and <laughs> strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I'm gonna make it again, and I'm gonna make it right this time. Okay, so they have sea salt on them. Hold on. Oh, wait, she needs to take it here. I'll, I'll take a picture. Oh, I'm just going to do video. Oh, well, yeah, here, so let we me take a picture. We'll put, we'll put the video up on the Patreon. I'm sorry, but it looks like Mr. Hanky. <laughs> looks like Mr. Hanky, the, the Christmas food. <laughs> oh, my God. I really took a close-up of those turds. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, I'm going for this one. Should we like just hold it and do it all on like the count of one or yeah, whatever? I think I'm a- Are you recording? I'm recording. Hold on. Oh, these. <laughs> I haven't tried. What if I just put these <laughs> with before people even listen to this episode? I can just put this up. Put this up right? to make them wonder what it is. Okay, first I just ate a bite of chocolate. Okay, should I go? Should I go here or should I put my headphones back on? Go put your headphones back okay. on, and, and we'll do it on All right, on I'll the go. mic. Here, I'll do a second video. Okay. Should I? Should each of us record another person? Yeah, I'll Hold record on. you. Okay, you're gonna record Patrice, and then you record. Oh, myself, oh, but... Lord! The pickle is falling out of my pickle. All right, you ready? Yes. One, two, two, three. three. Oh God! Oh God! I don't hate it. I don't hate it either. <laughs> Not the worst thing I've ever eaten. <laughs> I kind of like it. it. It's something's crunchy. Something's kind of wrong about it, but right. <laughs> <laughs> I love all yeah. these things. Yeah. Okay. Patrice ate all of hers. I haven't eaten all mine yet. Um. Mm. I've got pickle juice on me. Mm-hmm. Me too. You know what? I don't taste the chocolate so much. I turn mine off. Mm. Sorry. That's all right. 
I just taste a pickle and I like it. I would eat those at a party. They're so good. Yeah. Okay. You would eat you would eat the chocolate covered ones. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> I think I need to put a recipe. Yeah. For wicked wickles chocolate dipped pickles. But that okra is like that's that's okra. the best pickled okra. Oh, it is. oh they're so good. It's, that is like really the best. Call us wickles. Mm-hmm. We can do an ad deal. Absolutely. I need to go wash my hands. Me too. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's all I have to... Oh, there were just two more things really quick. Okay. While I was researching this, I found two semi-unrelated but not unrelated at all things. One of them is that there is a place called the Okra Project that brings home cooked healthy meals to black trans people who have food insecurity. And the other is there is a group called or an app called Eat Okra that you can download onto your phone and support black owned businesses. Awesome. It. So um, I'll we'll link these to both links. of those. Yeah. And that's it. Okra. That's the end. And in the after talk, I'm going to talk about other slime monsters and other places. Oh, oh, oh. We'll be back. <laughs> Bye. Do you want more Strange South every week? We can help. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can join our Facebook fan group, Fans of the Strange South Podcast, to keep the chat going with our whole creepy community. Do you have a story idea for us or a story of your own to share? Email us at stories at the strange south.com. Plus, if you join our Patreon, you not only help support the podcast, you get an exclusive bonus episode for every show and a discount on merch. You can find links to all of these things on our website, thestrangesouth.com, along with photos, links, and show notes from every episode, Strange South t shirts, mugs, and other goodies. See you there. Today, I want to talk about Amanda Mahaley Lancaster. So she was born October 18th, 1875, and she was the third of seven children. And I want to give a big shout out again to to Kenneth. Kenneth! Kenneth, who sent us the book, mm-hmm. Oracle of the Ages, because mm-hmm. that is who I'm talking about today. Mahaley Lancaster is the Oracle of the Ages, and that's the name that she gave herself. She, oh. She was the third in a lot of children mm-hmm. uh, from Harriet and John Lancaster. Obviously, a large family, and I think both of her parents were English, coming from the England. But she grew up in Heard County, Georgia, which is West Georgia. It's a little south of a town that I cannot fucking remember now. <laughs> but I applied for a job from the college. Mm-hmm. Columbia? Carroll- Carrollton. Carrollton. Yeah. Carrollton. Carrollton. It's about an hour and a half from here. Which we should totally go in one of our mini excursions that we said that we're going to go on one and go day. visit her her grave. She lived like all of her life basically in Heard County. Everybody knew about her. She was born with a call or a placenta sac <gasps> covering her face. Oh, cool! And talking about like an in call birth, they're also known as mermaid births. Or a veiled birth. And it's when the baby comes out partially wrapped in the amniotic sac. And it happens in one in every 80,000 births. So it's extremely rare. And if you have a baby come out like fully encased in the amniotic sac, it looks like they're kind of gift wrapped in a little bubble, which is why they call it, you know, a mermaid birth. But many cultures consider these babies that are born with the call a sign of good luck. And they're also thought to have special powers yeah, given like, seers. like mm-hmm. Second Sight, which Mahaley had. She began telling fortunes actually when she was six years old. And uh, she kept telling fortunes throughout her life until she died at the age of 79. Oh, and it made her famous, and it made her a lot of money. But she was also like a really highly intelligent woman. She was shrewd. She was multi-talented. She started out like in 1897 as an educator <laughs> at Red Oak School in Heard County. She was also known to go door to door selling seeds. Okra seeds. Okra seeds. <laughs> yeah, okra seeds. Uh, Squash seeds, all the seeds. <laughs> all the seeds. All the seeds. She wrote a weekly news column for the Franklin News and Banner under the pen name Uncle Sam. <laughs> uh, two years after the ratification of the 19th Amendment in 1920, she announced her candidacy for state senate. Damn. Uh, she, she was fucking awesome and fucking weird. Okay? <laughs> Mahaley's very Irish, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but her parents were 
English. So who, who knows? But who you knows? say she gave herself the name Mahaley? No. You said Amanda Mahaley? Was no, it? she gave herself the name Oracle of the Ages. Oh, That's okay, what she okay, called okay. herself. She also, like, of course, she didn't win, like, you know, coming out and, and running against, you know, men during the 1922s, like, or the 1920s. But she also ran again in 1926 as a candidate. But what that did with her running, it it opened up the idea to other women, like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, not only can we, like, vote now, we can go in and run for office. And she was, you know, really anxious to do more for people. She's such a... A weird, complex, like, character. But at the heart of it, she really wanted progressive things. So she ran on the platform for education, for rural schools, for good roads, for banking laws, for pensions, for um, to pay for road workers. She, vote, she ran on the platform for game laws and many other issues about people and um, to help people out. I would vote for that. Yeah, absolutely. She never won a seat, unfortunately, but she is definitely remembered for her progressive politics. And she was the first woman in Georgia to run for a political office. Ooh, awesome. So you notice that she also ran for game laws. And that happens to be because at this time, Georgia had like this numbers game happening, like this lottery where, you know, you guess numbers and you win the pile, you know. So there was like a little bit of the gambling in that area going on. And she made a lot of money giving numbers out to people. <laughs> who would win and ah. if she gave you lucky numbers like they came <laughs> and you paid her a dollar 10 to get lucky numbers and if you won the deal was you're supposed to split half of your winnings with Shit. her so people like all the time would, good deal. would line up you know to get the numbers from the seer from the oracle of the ages as she called herself uh, this numbers game that they were playing at the time is called bug so if you should go get your bug numbers hmm. She came into the possession of some law books and studied for a period of time and began operating as a lawyer. And this is kind of up for debate, too, because mm -hmm. they say that some people said, well, she just studied to be a lawyer, that she never took the bar. And other people said that she did take the bar and that she did take the bar and pass. And I think that's something you could probably look up. Yeah. But there's like really no definitive answer as to whether or not, you know, she was legally a lawyer, but she did, like, defend somebody in court as a lawyer. I mean, she was just, like, just crazy. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> not wow. crazy. I don't, I'm saying crazy in a good way. Yeah. I really don't mean that in, in like, a derogatory uh, sense. No, it's like she it's knew she, how to do this, so she, she did the thing. Yeah, yeah, she was just, like, all out there. The only thing that she wasn't good at was farming. She oh. was a very unsuccessful farmer. But she sold seeds. But she sold seeds. Oh, okay. So the seeds were good, but she, I guess she just like couldn't She sold grow. them because she couldn't grow them. Uh, she also frequently volunteered information about like the location of missing people and helped the law find people or they contacted her, you know, occasionally for different cases. Hey, y'all. We had some technical difficulties. So we had to back up a little bit and start over. So there's a little bit of overlap. We apologize. Now back to our story. The game that everybody played back then was called Bug. You could win like a lot of money. People from Florida, from, you know, Tennessee, Alabama, all around would come and get numbers from Mahaley. A lot of times they hit. And so she was known. And the thing about it was, is she would give numbers to anybody that had a buck 10. So it didn't matter what color you were. She would not play favoritisms to white people. So mm -hmm. the white people that had money had to like stay out there with like everybody, with the poor people, with people not of the same race, you know. I think her probably her philosophy was a dollar 10 spends just as good as mm -hmm. the next person's. So. As far as looks go, that's one of the most prominent things about her that people noticed. She was very tall. She was skinny looking. She she was actually taller than most women, probably like five foot ten or so. Some called her homely. 
I don't know. She just looked like a Southern lady. I mean, I mean, she just looked like a woman to me. Mm-hmm. You know, she wasn't Tallulah Bankhead or anything like that. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. People were weird back in the day. They were, because they'll talk about these women that were so beautiful. Like, I don't know, Marie Antoinette. And I look at her paintings and I'm like, was she though? Right. Right. And it might be all the wigs what? that she had to was, wear. Was like her money beautiful? Or I don't know. I think it was more like the standing and the money and being beautiful. But you know, uh, Mahaley had money, but she wore like layers. She was very dramatic. She wore like layers of dresses with like these big skirts. Ooh, she fun. would tie um, like a waistcoat of some kind with ribbons and cords and belts. Mm, like it. And she had like m- like all these necklaces like jangling around her her neck. She had bright red hats with flowers and feathers and Sounds beads like, uh, that she would Mick wear. Mick Jagger. Right? Uh, <laughs> she would carry a fan and a ledger book and a Bible, which I think is a perfect huh. description of her because she was a believer. Like, she wasn't an atheist. She didn't preach anti church or anything like that. She went to church, but she also liked her money. So, the whole like get up, that she was very unique. I don't think she would be unique in this day and age, mm. maybe, you know, but. Back then, turn of the century, in the South, in the Bible-thumping, poor rural areas, she was definitely something to look at. And people often talked about, yeah. you know, her looks and stuff. She would um, switch clothing sometimes. Sometimes she'd wear an army coat with a uh, epaulette, oh, like, uh, which is the shoulder mm-hmm. things, like Michael Jackson, mm-hmm. you know, showing, you know, rank of armed forces. And then she would wear a military cap. Uh-huh. And sometimes she would just not give a shit and wear, like, ill-fitting clothes and dirty aprons and stuff. So she was <laughs> all over the place. It was, it was basically whatever was on hand. I don't think, I don't know if she gave much thought about it, but, like, when she went all out to, like, be presentable or to act the part or, you know, she did it to the nines. In the Oracle of Ages, which was written by Dot Moore, which is a book that Kenneth gave us. And in there, Dot says, uh, when she was poor, she dressed rich. And when she was rich, she dressed poor. Hmm. So she's extremely interesting. And if that wasn't interesting enough, she had a glass eye. Oh, whoa. So she kept like a marble in her eye socket and sometimes she would remove it and polish it on her sleeve oh and my God. pop it back in. Oh, <laughs> sometimes she would wear an eye patch. Sometimes she would like do wear a hand painted marble that had like an iris and like bloodshot lines oh all over God. it. You know, and I love her. And kids loved her too, and she liked kids. So there was all the time like she had kids around the house during the daytime. Her and her sister lived in this like rickety old shack, like really rickety. And I've got pictures of um, the shack that they lived in for most of their lives. But, you know, kids, like, she was so different and so just unique that they kind of were just drawn to her, like her and her theatrics. And, And she liked them as well. Why didn't, what happened to her eye? So, many stories. The story that I think is probably most true from what I've read is that one day in her 20s, she was walking with a bunch of women and they were all like had their big hats with their hat pins and stuff. Oh, God. And a big wind came up and blew the hat (gasps) from the lady in front of her and the eye pin, (gasps) hat pin, hat pin went into her eye. Oh, my God. That's horrible. Yeah. I can't think about it. I can't think yeah. any, any eyeball things. Mm-hmm. Any, yeah. So with. that's that's how. Wow. Probably the most realist are the. I don't know. There's so many like so many people take stories way out there when talking about it, and some of them are not even you know true. And then, and she she just I mean she just rolled with it. I don't know how much she was aware of that kind of stuff happening. You know, she was a woman of dualities. She was, like, very kind and generous if she liked you. But if she didn't like you, she could be, like, mean and abusive. You know, she liked her money, but she was also kind of generous with it sometimes. But then a lot of times she wasn't. It's like she was very shrewd with her money. She cussed just as much as she prayed. And she did both with a lot of zeal. 
And she didn't like drinking. She didn't like girls being silly over boys. <laughs> she, she just didn't care for any of that. But she had, and this is kind of weird. This is where her duality comes into play. So she didn't like the drinking and probably like how a lot of men or people act when they're drunk. That was probably more of it. But she didn't have a problem with the whiskey or bootleggers. Huh. So hmm. I don't know what the difference is. I guess if people, I guess she didn't like people who couldn't hold their alcohol or acted foolish oh. on alcohol, and that yeah. was probably more of that. Sorry, Mahaley. And, and she didn't. Yeah, <laughs> this whole episode. She <laughs> hated. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I'm not sorry. And also, she, you know, she didn't have a problem with gambling because she was running numbers. Yeah, you know, that was like a big income for her. She had no problem with running numbers because also churches like raffled off cakes yeah. and mm. prizes, and so that was a form of gambling. That's too. always funny to me that churches always do those like raffles and cakewalks and stuff. And be and so opposed like, oh. to like ga- gambling yeah, like, and lotteries. No lottery here. Mm. Yes. Um. She lived in her house in that rickety old shack with her sister Sally for most of her life. And her sister was kind of her counterbalance. She obviously wasn't as flamboyant as um, Mahaley. And they, I think they called her pretty and not as tall, like the opposite of Mahaley. <laughs> but I mean, there really was no one like Mahaley. People, oh, so animals. She loved animals. Uh, she had like a menagerie of cats and dogs that slept on the, her front porch and she would lock her chickens up in the kitchen at night. <laughs> you know, it was just, you know, it was just that kind of living and the dogs went with her to church. So, you know, and if you didn't like it, then too bad. Um, visitors often came and would sit out in her front yard and wait to either get numbers or to have their fortune. And sometimes when they would buy numbers, she would just give them fortunes instead mm. but they would ask her you know about missing missing jewelry relationships predictions health issues and she was really scarily accurate most of the times uh she would even like predict deaths and stuff wow. mm. and there was one story where a guy was wanting a fortune and before he even said anything she was she would just refused to even talk to him and after he left, he died, like, in an automobile accident. Wow. So it was just, like, weird shit like that happening. So the bug numbers, I told you that, you know, she asked for a dollar ten, a dollar and a dime, as she said. And she says, a dollar for me, a dime for my dogs. So <laughs> she had a budget. She knew what it was. And the bug numbers were so popular, and she could ask that price. Her fortune telling was not as expensive if you wanted to get mm-hmm. both of them um, from her. Examples of her telling people where things were that they lost. Uh, one visitor lost like a valuable ring. And she says, you know, go home, walk to the end of the porch and on the right side, look down and, and they would find their ring. Other times she would like give fortunes like your sweet hair, uh, sweet hair. <laughs> your sweet hair. Your sweet hair. She's like she would say, a sweetheart with dark hair, or you'll marry twice and have three children, or maybe you'll be in a bad car wreck. And yeah. those things would come true. There was a story about a guy who was growing cotton and they would pick the cotton, he would put it in his house, and then like the next day the cotton seemed to have shrunk. And he came to uh, Mahaley and he was, does cotton shrink in this area? Like, what's the deal with cotton? And she was like, no, she's like, some, somebody's stealing your cotton. And this is what you need to do. He's, he's going to come back. And if you stay awake, you'll hear him. And when the thief gets on your porch, switch on the light and you will know the person taking your cotton. And so this guy did that. And that night he went home, he turned all the lights off and he waited and he waited. And it was like, you know, maybe three in the morning. And he heard a car drive down the road and there was no lights on this car. And somebody jumped out and came onto the porch. And as soon as they did, he flipped on the lights and it was a relative of his that was taking this cotton and stealing it in the middle of the night. Okay. That sounds more like shrewdness than uh, than 
foreseeing you know what i mean right. like she's just like yeah dude for real like somebody's still in your cot and yeah like, and you probably know turn the because lights on. everybody I was knows about a lot of her what she's saying to people well yeah mm-hmm. and well she was a woman to be that highly smart, intelligent. Like, critical thinking yeah, it sounds is really like what got her there i don't yeah. know about the numbers but i don't yeah. know, understand the bug part of the numbers well the bug was just what they call it it was lotto. just it was just a lot it wasn't a state lotto it was just like a local lotto i think it was a local you know not like we think of the georgia lottery now no. the powerball like powerball yeah, right. millions <laughs> right powerball millions. 40 million dollars cross the border buy your ticket <laughs> but i think you're absolutely right i think a lot of her, what she was doing is she was just a smart lady mm-hmm. and she knew how to read people and she knew how things worked and so she just told people who probably didn't have much education right. like common sense stuff and then it was it was seen as an oracle and right. that's how mm-hmm. she made a that's how she made a living and she made so much well done. M- money doing this and she mistrust like a lot of southern people still do banks mm-hmm. and kept her money all on her property in tin cans and buried mm-hmm. in like chicken coops and and all of these things and it got to the point where people knew how much money that mm. she was making. So she started to get robbed mm. and they would like come on her property in the middle of the night. And it was just her and her sister by themselves, elderly, you know, young. And then, el- I mean, they lived there all their lives, but later on, like when she was a little bit elderly uh, or older, because she came, lived until 79. Yeah. So they would come, they would come on her property, like two women by themselves. And would steal like three thousand dollars, you know. But that would just be like a little bit of the things that she had hidden. And at the time, the sheriff, you know, she would call and complain to the sheriff. And then the people that came to rob her got more emboldened because they saw that she really couldn't do anything to defend herself mm-hmm. living there in the county, just her and her sister in this little shack. That they would come while they were there. And just, like, force them at gunpoint <gasps> to stay, you know, while they, you know, were t- asking where, uh, where all the money was. And she dick. got really scared and so involved the law enforcement. And law enforcement spent a lot of time and money trying to protect her and catch the people coming on her properties that steal from her. And finally, they're like, we're spending way more time and resources mm. in this county than we have. So her and her, her relatives and the law enforcement were like, look, you've got to put your money in the bank. Yeah. So one day they went there and they spent all day and she's like, okay, this is where you need to look. And it's like all these law enforcements, all of her relatives, like, you know, went throughout her property and dug up and, you know, got all of this money, like under things in chicken coops Ah. and like under, you know, the porch, uh, in jars buried under trees, like all of these crazy places. And they would find, money and she would just put it there on the blanket and then she got an escort into town with her blanket and she went to the bank and like just like put her blanket down to the president of the bank and he was like uh we're not touching that because that's got chicken shit all oh over my it. god she's like it he was like it stunk it wasn't counted it was all wrinkly he's like you've got to and they're like that now, like with your Laundry coins. It. Yeah, it's like, ah. wah, wah. <laughs> it's like well, you got to straighten it out first. It's you like clean you that money up. You got to clean the money up before you can deposit. So they spent all afternoon like straightening it up, like brushing the chicken shit and oh the dog God. poo and stuff ah. off the money and deposited thirty thousand dollars. In the 1800s? In the 1900s. Early, early, yeah, yeah. early yeah, to mid-1900s. So she had Ooh. money, and they think that she didn't even find all the money that she had. Oh, my God. Yeah. Say, she should have gotten that money and built the damn giant fence yeah. and hired a man to built stand a, out there and not shoot people. Built a fence <laughs> out of money. She still, <laughs> you know, she acquired, like, she had money. I'm like, there's a way to keep those people out if you've got that much money. You right. could have, like... Yeah, but we all know it's not. I mean, if, if somebody's eccentric, I yeah. she has some organizational mental, I know. skills are not necessarily necessarily on point for something like and that. And there's a trust issue too. Yeah. There is a like she probably has had a lot of people taking I advantage know, of her. I know, but she had to end up putting it in the bank that she didn't trust. Right. Yeah, but you know, she'd probably I know hold her by then. Yeah. Believe me, I know. <laughs> 
probably still had some stashed of money, like hidden away somewhere. All right, we're going to Carrollton tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't think that people haven't tried, right? <laughs> She kept up. She did, you know, she did the numbers. She did all the fortune teller. And she was making, like, there was people in her yard every single day. And she would just, she would take in a few at her leisure. And when she decided to take a break, she would just, like, go out the back and walk around and just, like, wouldn't do anything. And there'd be, like, people waiting in line. But you couldn't say anything to her because, again, she'd, you know, she'd probably tell you where to go. <laughs> and, you know, she did things at her own pace and at her own good time. And in the 1930s, about this time, our favorite uh, darling, Tallulah Bankhead. Ah, no way! came back from England and was visiting her dad up in Jasper, Alabama. And while she was here, she also visited her aunt in Montgomery. Remember her aunt and her grandmother who took care of her when she was young. And she had some friends that lived in Georgia and in Carrollton specifically. And she was visiting them and her friend that she was visiting in Carrollton, like told everybody like, mm -hmm. Oh, Tallulah is coming to visit us. And it's like just grand. Cause you know, she had, you know, everybody knew who she was, especially in the area and stuff. So she came there and she was like visiting and she was complaining cause she had lost this diamond ring that was nearly as big as the hope diamond. And mm -hmm. she just kept going on on and on and on about this ring. So her <laughs> friend who she was visiting in Carrollton was like, well, you know what? We have a seer that lives, you know, just 30 minutes away. Let's go visit her and see if we, you know, she can't find your ring for you. So Tallulah Bankhead drove about 25 miles south of Carrollton and visited um, Mahaley. And they got there and drove up. And of course, Mahaley's yard was full of people. So they had to like wait until dark because she did not take preference of famous people over just mm -hmm. common people or poor people. Everybody had to wait their turn. She got in there and Mahaley read cards. Like she had just a regular deck of cards and she was sit like in this dark room. Cause I don't think there was indoor plumbing or electricity or, or anything like that. And so she would just sit in this room in this dark room. Tallulah went in there and she told her about this ring and you know, Mahaley just stared at her and, and listened. And then you know, Tallulah stopped talking and it got real quiet. And then Mahaley goes, sunset. And then Tallulah's like, sunset? What do you mean sunset? And then Mahaley went, the ring is in a quilt. What? And the ring is amongst a quilt that has red and yellow and blue and green white squares. Go home, look in the quilt, and you'll find it. That is all I know. If you go in three days, you'll find it. If you wait longer, you may not find it in the quilt. Okay. And that was it. And it was like, you know, the oracle has spoken. <laughs> the trash heap has spoken. The, so, meh. <laughs> go ahead. I love that. No. That's my, that was my favorite part of Fraggle yeah. Rock. So, meh. There was no more conversation. Tallulah left. And she returned to her family home in Jasper. That happened to be called Sunset. Oh, oh my God. No. And they tore that place up. <laughs> they looked at every quilt on every bed and every cupboard and every place possible in her dad's home in Sunset in Jasper, Alabama. And they could not find that quilt or her ring. So thinking of all the places that she had been, she remembered that she did go up into the attic to look for something in one of the, um, one of the trunks up there. And so she went up into the attic and inside the shelf of one of the trunk was a quilt <gasps> that was red and yellow and blue and ah! green and white and she bent over and picked up the quilt and shook it gently and heard a clink. <laughs> oh, my God. And there she found her ring that was absolutely almost as big as the Hope Diamond. Oh, my God. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> so it makes you wonder, right? It makes mm -hmm. you wonder. She did say a lot of things. I was going to say, that doesn't even make you wonder. That, like, well, that you, makes you believe her That makes you believe. And a lot of people really did believe in Mahaley. One in particular to his demise, Ooh. which was probably good, 
was a um, man named John Wallace. And John Wallace really made Mahaley famous. What made Mahaley famous was his trial. The reason she became Faley because famous because she was like obviously such a character anyway. But she John Wallace had been seeing Mahaley since like 1920s, probably for 30 years. Twice a year he would come to her because he was a firm believer in her powers because she had proven herself over and over again. The only thing is, is that uh, Mahaley was a witness against him in his trial for oh. murder. And that's what I was watching when, we, when you came in. And I'll, I'll talk about that in just a sec. Early on, when John Wallace was a young man, he would have tools or something disappear. And he would go to Mahaley and he was like, you know, what happened to my tools? And she was like, well, you he's like they've been stolen he's she's like no they haven't been stolen it's like you just forgot them in your grandparents barn and so he would go to his grandparents barn and there they would be and this happened so much that he was like he was a firm believer and he saw it like at least twice a year every six months or so john wallace was a landowner and he became pretty infamous in i forget what county it was the county just north it was a nearby county Merriweather County, maybe, that he became infamous in. He was a landowner, and he was known specifically because he was ruthless and rich mm. and a bully, and he would beat his hands, like his farm hands and stuff. And, and that really got, he got his reputation that way. Although it is known that uh, Mahaley despised people like that, mm. so he kept that from her when he would come visit her. I don't know if she really knew how horrible he was to the people on his that worked for him or if she just kept it quiet because she was working you know, like she knew that she could use this against him eventually. Mm. But anyway, he would, you know, he would visit her and she would he would say, like, I have uh, my shotgun's missing. I don't know where it is. And she would tell him that one of his hired hands had stolen the shotgun. But the hired hand was really scared and he was so scared that he was going to return the shotgun. So just wait a couple of weeks and he'll get the shotgun back. Well, of course, John Wallace being the asshole that he was, was not going to wait a few weeks and he would go find that hired hand and he would beat the shit mm. out of them. And he would just go like on a rampage and he would, he would just, you know, anytime like something like this came up, he would, he would just go through that person's house and wreck it until he find what he thought they had stole from him. You know, he was, he was just a, a son of a bastard. Mm -hmm. You know, he was just, just a, not a nice guy at all. And he nearly beat that farmhand to death. Wallace had all of this this reputation around him for fighting or like drinking and being just a horrible person. And he knew that, you know, Mahaley would banish even the most loyal of her customers uh, from her house for any, any kind of abuse like that. So he definitely kept those details away from her and living in another County, he was able you know, to do that, but he was like one of the most powerful bullies in that County. And he, he owned the law. He owned basically everybody. He owned the churches, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. But he was just absolute shithead. But, you know, he'd go to Mahaley and he would ask about personal life. She told him he would marry. She would, you know, predicted how long he would live. And she told him that he would live to be like an old man. And he kept that to heart. And anytime like something like a prized dog or some money or a ring or a saddle or anything like an old Bible that would go missing or that would get stolen, you know, he'd ask a Bible and she would more than likely tell him exactly where it was. One time John Wallace came to her over some missing cows and she told him that Turner had taken his cows. Mm. Well, that infuriated Wallace. Mm. So Wallace went to find Turner and Turner happened to be a farmhand who he had fired earlier um, over something that he had done in spite of what Wallace told him to do. And so 
he found Wil- Wilson Turner. He kidnapped him oh. and then he murdered him. Shit. And he murdered him in a rage and then got rid of his body on his property. But he's had such <sighs> a huge property that when people started looking for Wilson, he forgot oh, where he no. put the body. Okay. So he went to Mahaley. Oh my God. And asked where the missing body of Wilson, not saying that he was the murderer. I don't oh, think he ever wow. confessed that he killed his, you know, ex farmhand. And she told him where the body was. So he went and he took two of his farmhands and they got Wilson's body. And he set it on fire and he like tried to spread it out and get rid of it because the law was already on to him. Mm -hmm. The law already knew that he had something to do, but they didn't have a body. And then Wilson or uh, Wallace forgot where it was. Mahaley told him where it was. And then he got these two farmhands to help him like dismember and burn his body. Later on, when this was like 1950s, when all of this happened, you know, they came and they arrested Wallace and, You know, there was like a big trial going on about, you know, this wealthy landowner who was known to beat people near death and just like what a son of a bastard he was. And during his trial against him, Mahaley testified against him. Mm. And also, interestingly enough, the farmhands who were two black men also because he made not... This is this is what a self entitled asshole he was. He made his farm hands like do the dirty work of dismembering mm-hmm. this guy and burning his body and getting rid of it. So he didn't have to actually So do... he didn't yeah, he didn't have to do the the hard dirty work. And they testified against him and John Wallace was actually found guilty. And Good. executed in the electric Ooh. chair in 1950. Mm. And it was like one of the few rare cases, if only cases, because he is one of the richest men ever to be given the death penalty. And he was also the first white man to be given the death sentence on the testimony of two black men Ooh. and Mahaley Lancaster. Wow. Like the whole time he was like, but Mahaley said I would live to be an old man. And then she testifies against him. And that just like oh, infuriated wow. him. And that's because she was the informant to the police. And that's why she didn't kick him out every time that he came mm-hmm. and um, visited her. So this whole murder case, the John Wallace murder case trial, uh, became a book. Murder in Coweta County. Coweta County. Coweta County. Coweta County. C O W E T A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By Margaret Ann Burns. And the book turned into a made for television movie in 1980, huh. starring The Man in Black. Johnny, uh, 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 Johnny Cash. Oh, wow. Is that what you were watching? Uh-huh. Yes. As Sheriff Potts, who is oh the God. sheriff who and- went after him. And his wife, June Carter. No shit. As Mahaley. Sorry, Mahaley. I didn't know they were in anything. And Andy Griffith. No. As John Wallace. Yeah. (laughs) What? Yeah, Andy Griffith. Oh my God, Andy Griffith, a bad guy. He was. He was a. He was a son of a bastard. Oh my God, that's crazy. I know. It's it's really crazy. Mahaley had lots of fans, obviously, and that like really made her famous. And newspapers, like if, if you go and look at newspapers.com and you search her name, mm. she has like all of these newspapers articles come up about her because she's so flamboyant and she testified and it was like weird. And it was like everybody was like knew she was weird. But if you were like looking at it from like somebody from Atlanta, they were like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what is this going on with this lady and her cards and her red hats and her like general patches? and her glass eye and, and all of that. Uh, Celestine Sibley, who wrote for the Atlanta Constitution, many articles about Mahaley and became like a follower and a fan of hers and 
just described her perfectly, said that she is a fortune teller, an astute businesswoman, and the closest thing to a genuine old fashioned witch that I've ever <laughs> saw. And one of the stories, there's so many stories, like if you read, I highly recommend that you get Dot Moore's book, uh, Oracle of the Ages, about Mahaley Lancaster. Because there's so many like really cool little stories. One of the things that they say, uh, like during the trial, before she like had to go up on the stand, and she kind of knew the judge because, of course, she was a lawyer herself, and she actually defended somebody earlier on. So they all knew about her, but they also knew about her because the judge said that he oversaw a um, foreclosure. Of, of a property that had a piano and she wanted that piano. And he was like, well, the piano is 200 bucks and she didn't have 200 bucks on her. And she was like, could you hold it for me until this afternoon? And he was like, sure. So she went out that afternoon and just basically on the street corner, everybody knew her started telling fortunes and she told fortunes and gave numbers all afternoon and raised $200 and came <laughs> back and bought that piano. <laughs> so everybody knew her and she was just like really just an eccentric, interesting, intelligent person that a lot of people appreciated. Like a lot of people really did see like the wisdom that she had. And then a lot of people thought she was just a crazy old <laughs> kook, right? <laughs> But at the end of her life, she lived in that old shack of hers for a little bit longer. And then she decided that she needed herself a big fine house. So she bought herself like a nice big house right before she died. And she also bought the bank. What? And she ended up dying November 22nd, 1955. And she is buried in the cemetery at Caney Head Methodist Church with the epitaph of neither did his brethren believe in him, hmm. which a lot of like Christian Baptist people were like, oh, because I think that was a reference to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So comparing herself to Jesus, which I think is kind of her last middle finger, <laughs> you know, to everybody there, which I loved it. Her estate when she died was valued at $200,000. Dang. And this was in 1955. So it was roughly about $2 million when Damn. she died. After she died, of course, rumors of all of her money, like, you know, buried in all the places circulated, as well as there was a, a rumor going around that her head was removed prior to burial what? and what? sold for an excessive sum of a million dollars <laughs> to a medical research center that would discover, like, how she did the things that she did, like her powers and all of that stuff. <laughs> and because of of this people wanted evidence of that so of course they vandalized her grave oh. and they had to do one of those slabs over the grave to keep people from um digging up the grave and everything so if you go visit it you'll see the slab oh over my her God. grave like i said oracle of the ages a reflection of the curious life of fortune teller mahaley lancaster is a really excellent book and read to have on your shelf by Dot Moore. And one of the best anecdotes in the book is that the author recounts the day when her father came upon Mahaley and she was just walking along a road and he pulled over and asked if she needed a ride. And she was like, sure. So this old woman who dot had no idea who she was you know got in the car and when they got to her front yard she turned around and looked at the children who were in the car you know her brothers that were with her and she's like these two boys will become lawyers and they did mm -hmm. and then she looked at dot and she said and this little one will grow up and write something about me ah! uh -uh. <laughs> That's amazing. And she did. Oh, that's so cool. Oh. And that is the story of Mahaley Lancaster, <laughs> Oracle of the Ages. Yes, Thank you so much, Kenneth. That's Mahaley. awesome. I love that. Good story, Patrice. That's a good one. Thank you all so much for listening. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Um, I'm wasting all my liver. Drinking. Man, why That's a good song. That'd be a good country wasting song. Wasting all your liver. I wasted all my liver all on flavored vodka. <laughs> Like, that, that that's a terrible country song actually the way i would just drink sang that it. And, and your mic is impotent i know it flops around really <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> your mic has ed your it mic is... has a problem well yay, this is yay. good because my story my story didn't quite meet my <laughs> oh my god is it about but hold on before no, we it's get not about tits before we get to the story <laughs> Okay. And before we talk more about tits, I'm ah! not going to talk about tits anymore. I can't okay. take it. Okay. <laughs> now I'm just going to slide it in like later. Oh, no. I can't. I'm sorry. Go ch- ahead. Just... <laughs> you know, don't be mean about my tits. Ah! It's the word. It's the word. I'm not like oh. one to use tits. Breasts. <laughs> yeah. Tits. I don't know boobs. <laughs> also, no, boob, like only one sliding in. Too. Ah! It's just. It's a mammogram. Oh, we were just talking about high schools and dances and being introverts and uh, and things like that and Cupid's Shuffle, which I'm going to have to learn how to do that, I guess. Oh, you don't have to learn. You just listen. You just listen. Okay. Yep. He tells you what to do. To the awesome. left, to the left, to the left, but, to the left, to the right. You've heard it. Isn't now that the kick, electric now slide? Kick, now kick, now kick, now kick. Now no, we had to learn the, that. We had to learn the electric slide to Cupid pass shuffle. the seventh grade. Hmm. What? Yes. They were required. We were oh required to do the electric slide to pass PE in the seventh grade. We had to do the electric slide. And they had something called the spirit wand that our principal had that he would bring out while we were doing our electric slide classes in seventh grade. And if you couldn't do the electric slide, he would hit you with the spirit wand, which was really just a stick covered in crepe paper. Oh, my God. (laughs) He was a mean, tiny man. I got hit in the back of the head with class rings turned backwards. Damn. I know. You got abused in high school. I didn't get abused. They couldn't have spanked me. And whooped a lot. Mm-hmm. For being bad. <laughs> well, yeah, they still like paddled. I've had, I got no, they didn't school. paddle at my school. My mom would have like, like busted a nut if they. Ah, paddled. She would have, I would Wait. love to see your mom bust a nut. <laughs> I don't. I don't think y'all understand what that means. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think you used it correctly. I don't think either one of you used it correctly. I still <laughs> want to see that. <laughs> Um, um, oh, I know, I know. Look, I know this we're using might be it my wrong. Favorite moment. <laughs> um, please. Uh, all right, all right. Oh my god, what just happened? <laughs> okay, so I do want to talk about somebody who I'm probably afraid. would have busted a nut. No, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're gonna have to have a conversation after this episode. Don't worry, I got the Google. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> Patrice is... Oh, this fool spring has really hit us all. Oh, I am the fool of the spring. I am the fool. Mm. <laughs> We gotta get the gills out, y'all. <laughs> You're right. I used that wrong. <laughs> I, didn't even I know. I didn't have to Google it to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was bust a gut was what I was going Or bust for. someone in the nuts. I mean, you can say that. <laughs> I swear, my throat just made a noise I didn't know it could make. <laughs> it's like your throat singing over there. <laughs> I can't. I have to leave. I'm leaving. <laughs> Oh, dear Lord. This is going to be hard to edit. I'm so sorry. I don't know. I think people want to hear this. They need to My mom does it. No. <laughs> no. Did she listen? She doesn't listen. Oh, hell no. Okay, good then. No, I think she tried for a while. Oh, bless her heart. too hard. <laughs> But no. God help me if my mom Google's bust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. I have to take this. All right. 
take it off now. We may have to do a restart on this, and this could be our Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um. <sighs> All right. Are you okay? Patrice I'm, is crying. I'm fine. I'm fine. Right. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Too many phallic phalluses. Welcome back. Are we really back, though? <laughs> We're going to try to... I'm going to try to concentrate on my story, y'all. Hey, is that supposed to be on? Has it been on this whole time? The oh, heater? it has been on. Yeah, let's go ahead and... We can turn it off. It'll be fine. <laughs> I just remembered that... Thank you. ...sound you just might be... The, the glowy button. The other glowy... There we go. Uh, <sighs> exclamation point. One more sip. Yeah, everything's <clears throat> fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why my throat's doing that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 